What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Park to Prem here with Tower Town. It's episode number 75 today. We're three quarters of a way to a century, which is a crazy, crazy achievement considering that the series has been going less than three months at this point. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. And uh, I was meant to mention this yesterday, it completely escaped my mind. Uh, but if you don't know, Football Manager is currently free to play for the next just under a week now. Uh, you've got until next Wednesday, if you're watching this, the first week that it's up, uh, to try out the game. So if you've ever been curious, maybe you've been holding off getting the latest version of the game, it could be a good time to hop in, see if you like it. If you do, of course, when the week's up, you can buy it. If not, if you've always wanted just to give FM a go and see if it's for you, it, it's still a pretty good time to hop in and give it a go. And well, today we start on the profile of Smolio. Uh, his loan, of course, ends at Watford. I even mentioned it midway through last episode that I needed to try and renew his loan. I then forgot about it completely. I am trying to get it renewed, and obviously last year we had a similar situation where it looked unlikely to be renewed right until uh, the end of June. It looks like it might have to be a similar situation if he's going to uh, get a chance to come to us. You can see here Watford are looking to give him a chance in the first team. They might be persuaded to reconsider their stance if a higher offer is submitted. I don't know if it's just me. I don't think I've ever been able to loan a player when I see this text here. Um, I, I have made an offer. I have offered way more wage budget than what you can see here, and it didn't really work out, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, apparently, we've got an interest in him for transfer. I would love to buy him back. I, how much do they want? I'm, I'm now curious, because the loan isn't going to happen. As I said, whenever I've seen the text about a much bigger offer, it doesn't really work out. Let's just offer 2.5 million and see what they say. Okay, well, never mind. They want 88 million, which probably aggregates to about 40 five million pounds that's a little out of my budget of course just as a little reminder we have got a few sell-on clauses with players we've got Dimitriou uh, who is currently playing for uh, Lille um, you can see here he's only valued at 250,000 pounds he's really not developed that much he has a 40% of next profit sell-on bonus um, in fact, no, that's a lie. It's a 50% of next transfer fee. I'm reading the one, wrong one there. We can choose to sell the clause for 1.25 million. I am beginning to wonder, will he ever sell for over 2.5 million? Maybe I'm writing him off a little soon, but I don't feel like he's developed a great deal. I'm very tempted to sell that, you know, for 1.25 million. We've also got the option to sell Erakart's deal. We get 50% of his next transfer fee from Swansea. He's a player with a hell of a lot of potential, but he's not really got the best of current ability. If you ask me, I feel like it's ambitious to imagine him achieving his goal. So those are two clauses that we could sell out for a combined almost £3 million. That suddenly doesn't seem like the worst idea in the world. Of course, there are various other sell-ons around. We've got players like Alex Lindsay from years ago, Kumwenda. We've got some instalments for Charlie Wellens. Remember this chap? Yeah, he's still at Preston. Of course, we sold him a number of years ago now, back in 2023, so five seasons ago. He's not really had a run of games anywhere, although actually last year he played a decent amount for Preston. This year he's just been completely ousted from their first team. I'm not entirely sure we're ever going to see much profit on the, the fee that they paid for him. Um, but there are a few that are definitely worth taking note of. 50% of whatever small yoke could get sold for in the future could come to us. Say he was to be sold by Watford for £50 million, that would be £25 million in the bank at some point. That could be quite nice. CC also has a 50% sell-on clause, uh, of course, sold to Newcastle United in the summer. He's not played at all in their first team. Kind of surprised they've not loaned him out. And it's similar with Bauman. We've got a 40% of next profit on this guy. I don't think he's ever going to sell for a profit. I don't think he's a £10 million player. Feel free to call me deluded. Feel free to call me wrong. Um, you can see, I never thought he'd play in our first team this year in League One. He's actually been playing in the Championship regularly uh, for Wigan, and he's not been playing very well. So I feel justified, but it's definitely worth just remembering. We do have all these clauses. Don't be surprised if, in, a, in I don't know, two, three, maybe five years' time, we suddenly get £20 million from just one of these players selling for a massive sum of money. That's certainly what I'm dreaming of. Anyway, since you were last here, uh, we've played three games. Of course, last episode we beat Birmingham very dramatically and we secured ourselves a spot in the FA Cup fourth round where we're going to be taking on Leicester City today. A Leicester City who, they've had a bit of a turbulent time, haven't they? Of course, Premier League winners on this graph and, well, they've never quite matched that in this save game. They had a, a seventh place finish, of course, in 2019-20. Then they had an eighth place finish and then since then they've been a bit of a yo-yo club. Last year they missed out on the playoffs or through the playoffs. They have got a good team, though. They've got players like Hamza Chowbury still, who, I mean, he looks very good. He's definitely better than the options we have. Brahim Diaz we looked at last episode. 
you know, don't underestimate them. And their big player apparently is Ilzat Akhmetov. I've never heard of this guy. He's 30 years old, a Russian centre mid. He looks quite good. They signed him for £16 million and he's played a hell of a lot of games for them over the years. So it's not going to be easy. And interestingly, Brendan Rodgers is their manager. Surely they've sacked him and he's come back. Indeed they have. That's incredible. I, you love to see it. It's gone full circle, everyone. Six years after he was sacked, he went back to them. I, I love it. Anyway, there have been three matches since you were last here. We started off with a great little win. We took on Rotherham. 4-1 away win. And, well, throughout this run of games, we've continued on our merry, merry way. Although this one, bit of a nervy start. Cadman getting a goal in the first 10 minutes for them. Uh, the ball to the back post we didn't deal with. Before half-time, though, a quick double. Quick uh, quick goal by James Molyneux, really. It came from nothing. A defensive error by their left-back. He capitalised on it. Great run. Great finish. you love to see it. Hugo then got us an interesting goal where I feel like the keeper should have done better. And that was pretty much the last kick of the first half. Going into the second half, I got shouty-shouty with the players. And Colly Sacco got another goal to add to his collection. He really has emerged as an important part of our team. A player who I know many of you were writing off early on. But with the system change, he has come into his own. And well, late on in this game, DKM grabbed a goal in added time. Uh, I can't remember if this was the goal. But I think this was the goal where there was a save and it got parried out to him. He just had an easy rebound tapping, if I remember correctly. And... Yeah, good result. 4-1. Kind of result we need. You can see here Colly Sacco, by the way. What a player this guy is. I've seen the comments saying about playing him as a centre-back. That's definitely something that I could do with him. But given how he's been playing at centre-mid, I don't really want to change things. He's had really good form as of late. He started the season awfully. Has definitely, definitely stepped it up. And I feel like he's been a big beneficiary of the system change. But also, I think, just a little bit of getting used to things. He's the big earner at the club. The highest earner. Not necessarily just in his, justifying his wage just yet, but he's on his way to doing just that. Anyway, the, we then took on Wrexham, a 1-1 draw in this one. They got a crazy goal, one of the best goals I've seen in FM20. Brad Kane with it. It sailed into the top corner. And in fact, now I think about it, I think this was the rebound goal for DKM. I can't see these goals when I do this bit of commentary. I'm going off memory, but what, one of these goals was a rebound. One of them was a header as well. I can't remember which. They're both very DKM goals. He loves to lurk around. He loves to be at the back post. He's continued on his great form, and he's definitely becoming one of the fan favourites. Got to remember, he's now been with us since the Vanarama National League North. He's been here a long, long time, and he's actually having one of his best seasons ever, which is absolutely superb to see. Anyway, most recently we took on Shrewsbury, uh, of course, a team that we lost to last year, somewhat infamously, uh, in the playoff semi-final. We got some revenge on them in this game. You can see Michael Roof grabbed two in two minutes, but, I mean, take a look at their clear-cut chances in the bottom left. I think we hit the woodwork four times. We had something ridiculous, like eight clear-cut chances. It should have been so many more goals for us, unfortunately... We couldn't find enough of a breakthrough. It only finished 4-0, but I'm not going to complain. The pick of the bunch, by the way, Dylan Turnbull, the youngster. Yes, I gave him his first ever first-team debut. What an aggressive goal that was. His 20 aggressive aggression ensuring that he got in there to tuck it away. And Kosic late on also got a goal. And, well, looking at Dylan Turnbull, glad to see him score on his debut. That's the big thing. He is a little unhappy at the moment because he's wanting to go to Norwich, which... I mean, no, that's never been uttered before in the history of mankind, but I don't intend to sell him. Goal on his first team debut. He is in the first team again today, and the reason that I've had to bring him into the first team, well, I've not had to, but I've decided to, is simply because James Molyneux is currently out with a calf strain for a few weeks. We need a player to come in and hopefully take his place, and whilst Turnbull is not quite as good, in fact, he's a long way off, I feel like... He can do a job for us, and so far he has done a job for us. And alongside Roof, who now has 12 goals in all competitions and has improved a lot, it doesn't feel like a one-man show anymore, which it really did at one point when we were playing the one-striker system. It felt like if Molyneux wasn't the man up top, we just didn't score. Things have changed, and when you look at the last five games now, it's a sea of green. You'll notice it is mid-January, so um, in terms of players with contracts expiring, Smolio's contract is obviously up because he's out on loan. We did have a fair few players with contracts expiring in 2029, so in 18 months' time. I have been reactionary with that. I have made um, a few new contract offers. So, for example, James Norris has signed a year extension, um, if I'm not mistaken. 
And I know I'm not mistaken. Uh, Lino Hugo has signed a new deal. He signed a four-year contract with the club. Had to give him an extra £1,000 a week, but I kind of feel like it's worth giving it to him. And perhaps the most crucial of our um, players getting new contracts is Russell Shuttleworth. Yes, a four-year deal, but with an optional three-year extension after uh, a promotion, which I'm hoping will trigger this summer, otherwise something has gone very, very wrong. Uh, the reason for being so keen to get this guy a big contract and a long-term contract is that he, he is a homegrown at club, which is really cool. We've had a bit of an issue with homegrownness in the sense that we have, you know, a decent chunk of players who are going to be homegrown at club fairly soon and some that are already homegrown at club. Um, but there is a bit of a concern that with, for example, the likes of Gannon and Stewart and potentially Smolio, they're not going to be players I want to have or can have in the first team or on the bench. And one of the requirements in England is that you have homegrown players in your starting eleven. Now, fortunately, I think it's one homegrown player at club in the starting eleven or on the bench. So we've got a few options still, but I don't know. Say we're in a world where Zach Gannon, Leighton Stewart and Smolio aren't with us next year. Our options get a little bit more limited. We do have plenty of other players coming through with homegrown at club, which is good, including Garrido, who has now officially joined us, which I'm very, very excited about. Loads of people said, why would you sign this guy, Jack? He looks potato. I don't think he looks potato. I don't, I don't think anyone actually used those words, but that was the implication, was that he looked like a potato. And, well, let me tell you now, he's a blooming good jacket potato, if he's any kind of potato. That, by the way, jacket potatoes are the superior potato. But just looking at the Media Dream 11, you love to see it. Garrido is in at right back, and Mr. Dessa's in at right back. Uh, sorry, Mr. Dessa's in at right back, Garrido's in at right mid. I don't know what to make of that. Also, Dessa is considered one of the key players. He's never played a game for us in the first team. I've just, off the back of noticing this prior to starting to record, promoted him into the first team. So, he will play for us soon. Unfortunately, he pay played for the under-23s already today. So he can't make an, a debut against Leicester, which would have been one hell of a debut. But yes, Shuttleworth in the team and Garrido in the media Dream 11. So to all of you Garrido doubters, I mean, either the media is completely wrong or you're completely wrong. We'll find out in due course, I'm sure. Good to see Hugo there, and obviously Smolio at uh, the back isn't too surprising. Molyneux has completely dropped off the face of the earth in terms of the media Dream 11. Despite being a striker, they had him as a left midfielder. Which, I mean, technically he can play left midfield. I'm going to put it down to the fact he's out injured. Otherwise, I think he would be here. But it definitely shows the fact that we are slowly but surely building a really, really good team here. You know, to now have five players in the Media Dream 11 feels good. And it makes me feel like had we not recovered like we have recently, we would be massively underperforming. Of course, you've seen the results. Just to have a look at the league table here. Uh, we currently sit 11 points ahead of Warsaw, although they do have a game in hand. Uh, the rest of the teams just behind them do not have the same game in hand. And to be honest, we're looking in a really good position with just uh, 17 games left of the season. Because, of course, with this database, with uh, the whole situation uh, that went on with Berry, there's only 23 teams in League 1. So there's 44 games in a year, not 46. I keep having to remind myself of that. But, uh, yeah, with that in mind, 17 games left of the year... We're in a very good position, but, well, we're not going to be focusing on the league today. We've got the FA Cup fourth round, and I feel like our general history with cup competitions has been massively struggling with them and doing kind of rubbish for the first few years. But in recent years, we've turned into quite a good cup team. In terms of the team we're going to go with, I think we'll go with the same squad that demolished Shrewsbury last time out. We played very, very well. That game was on the Tuesday, so I've rested up the players. For the most part, we've got improvements, although Williamson is a little tired. Also, I'm noticing here, I guess I guess we'll bring in Vasily. And I don't want to bring him in either for um, Hugo. We want Hugo on the pitch, but I'm going to give Vasily Ekanatovic another game because he's developing a lot. We've given him some fairly consistent opportunities in the first team. Williamson's fitness is just a little bit of a concern for me. He's struggling. On the bench, we've got plenty of options as well, but this is what we're going to go with. Kostic slowly but surely learning how to play out on the left. Much to the sadness, I guess, of DKM, who previously dominated that spot. Turnbull up front as well, making his live com debut. Scored on his first team debut. That 20 aggression proved crucial there. Maybe it can prove crucial again here today. He is a hungry striker. He will throw himself into every single tackle. He will get angry. He will get mean. And, uh, well, hopefully we're going to see a mean and angry 
Turnbull today that doesn't get sent off. That would be a bit of a disaster, but not entirely surprising because of the fact it's us. Anyway, I'm going to click on him. We'll have his name above his head at all times so he knows that we're watching him. Hopefully that's not going to put him off his game. Anyway, Ignatovic to Sacco here. Now with Kosic, is it just me or is this rain really annoying? Anyway, Kosic inside. Let's not talk about the weather. That's a very English thing to do. I don't need to do that yet. Well, I've not been in long enough lockdown long enough to justify talking about the weather in our, in my videos, at least. Ignatovic, by the way, what a ball. Turnbull, run on Turnbull. Number 30, born in the year... I don't know what year he was born in. I was going to say he was born in the year 2030, but we're not at that year yet in Football Manager, so that makes no sense. What, what year was he born in? Because I kind of lose track with uh, years. 2010 he was born in. So when we started our Tile Law Adventure, he was nine years old. Part English, part Australian, by the way. I wonder which way he will pledge his allegiances with national teams. Anyway, I need to stop worrying about the future of our star striker and start worrying about the immediate consequences of our defence falling asleep. Brahim Diaz, with his 10th goal of the year, he is very good. And it is definitely worth reminding ourselves. Leicester currently sit third in the championship. They are quite a good team. The nature of this goal being conceded from a throw-in does feel a little bit of a like a disappointment. Small Yo getting beaten at the near post isn't a particularly nice sight to see, but we're creating chances, and while the ball's in the mixer here, Hugo, can you get there? The big beanstalk of a Portuguese centre-back. I say a beanstalk. I mean, he's not even kind of tall and skinny like a beanstalk, though. He's tall and girthy like a giant sweet corn. Okay, the, these I need. To, I, I have definitely, definitely getting cabin for you. For, it's the only logical explanation here. Kosic, anyway, down on the left-hand side. Please help me, everyone. What can he do? He skips past one, skips past another, goes inside to Andre Dezel, Sacco with it. Dezel, go right. That's the ball to Grant. Knows that Mr. De Mr. Dess is applying pressure on his first team spot. He whips it in. Who else is there? It's Dylan Turnbull. Two goals in two and a goal on his live com debut. I don't want to big him up. He might be the future of Towler and perhaps the Molyneux injury... And kind of the consequence of that making me feel forced, I guess, to put him into the first team is going to be his making. Maybe he's going to be born out of the fires of Molyneux's injury and we could end up with those two partnering alongside each other up front. It's 1-1 and to be honest, based on how this game's played out so far, I feel like we've more than deserved that. We've been very, very good in this game, creating plenty of opportunities, having more of the ball... I'm, fe I'm feeling good. We've got a corner here as well. Andre, what can you do? Whips it in. Not the best ball in, but only cleared as far away as Kosic. Goes back wide to Andre Dezel. Take two. Can he get a better ball in this time? He can. Roof's there. And Odysseus is there to pluck the ball out of the air, unfortunately. Wasn't a bad header by any means. I guess a little too close to the keeper. But it's another opportunity that we've had. We're creating chances... Although we do need to stay switched on defensively here. Ball crossed in. Hugo gets it away. The sweet corn gives it to Shuttleworth. Who gives it to Roof? Go on. The flying Scott. He's through. Can he tuck it away? I couldn't tell what angle the ball was travelling at because of the camera. I got more excited than I needed to because that was not going anywhere near the goal after the keeper got a hand on it. Looks like it'll be 1-1 at half time, barring a very late goal. I mean, look at those stats, everyone. We're bullying this Leicester side. Away from home, a spirited performance. Unlike yesterday, where I was fearful of a second leg, or a second game, you know, a return leg. I wouldn't even mind it against Leicester here if it came to it. It would be more money in our bank account. Although, at the same time, I'd like to get on a little run. Ignatovic has potentially pulled his groin, so Williamson, who I was a little bit fearful of starting in the game due to his fitness, is going to have to come in. Fortunately... It's only going to be for half an hour. Is it... Okay, I'm pausing the game here to make a sub. Is it mad that I kind of want to do what I did against Birmingham and go more attacking? Is that a terrible idea? Or am I... I mean, someone talk me in or out of it. I realise that it's too late for that to be achieved from the comment section. Um, I'm going to take off Michael Roof and I'm going to bring in... I'm going to bring in Kosic up top and then we're going to go with DKM out on the left. So a bit of a shuffle like so but i'm gonna follow in the footsteps of what we did against birmingham and this might i might live to regret this everyone but it's the towel or way we're going very attacking for the last 20 minutes 
at a point in the game where the big dog probably expects us to pull out of the fight, to duck out the fight, to play cautiously. Nah, we're going to commit men forward and try and get this done here and now. And well, let's see if it can work in our favour. A highlight starting in our own half feels ominous. Although we get the ball forward, Turnbull can't get on the end of it. Moynes now with it. I mean, if this doesn't work out, I might live to regret it. But it worked last time against Birmingham. And given how this game's played out, I would rather, whilst we're massively on top in this game, just go commit everything forward than risk us going to a second leg where Leicester perhaps get their act together and, you know, just absolutely demolish us like they probably should have in this game. Anyway, Brahim Diaz with the ball spreads it out wide to Fraser on the left, who crosses it in and it's hit the woodwork and gone wide. That was a heart-in-mouth moment if I've ever seen one. I wanted to do another shout, but I can't. Let's hope that without me, I guess, berating our players, they can actually defend this corner. Abe is going to whip it in. Hugo gets it away. I can't stop thinking about sweet corn now. Please help me. Bard. Grant gets in the tackle. Diawara helps it on its merry way. Three minutes left. I mean, I guess we're going to a second leg, folks, and that's going to be coming your way right now. Turnbull's lone goal keeps us in it. We tried to go on the offensive right at the end. We have proven the haters and the doubters wrong by avoiding defeat. And we have this second leg to go into. I don't want this episode to drag out too long. It's going to be another double header. You can never tell me that we don't do enough of these. Um, but with that in mind, we're going to go forward. Ignatovic not out for too long, which is a bit of a relief. Hopefully we can come back strong. And, uh, well, hopefully we can give Leicester another great game and hopefully come out on top. Let's do this. Okay, folks. So we're back here for the second leg against Leicester. And... I don't know what to say. This has never happened before. Um, the game against Leicester has been rained off. We have a weird issue with waterlogging pitches here at Towler. It happened at our old stadium. It happens now at the Gateshead International Stadium that we rent. And unfortunately for me, the game has been rescheduled for the end of February. So I'm not going to have time to get this video out with the second leg. So instead, what I thought we'd do is we'd talk about some of the stuff that's happened during the January transfer window. You know, a, a little bit of an uh, additional update. Of course, this episode was only meant to be one game originally. And uh, well, tomorrow we'll come back for the second game against Leicester, the revenge game. And uh, we'll have to see what becomes of it. You can see we did have a few games scheduled between the two fixtures against Leicester. And we've won all of them. We beat Bristol Rovers 1-0. Garrido with a goal, yes. In the 93rd minute, brought him in, the winger, the prospect. And he showed what he was made of. He got a goal in this game for the winner. I mean, look how good he is. And it, I'll tell you what, he only went and got another goal. We started him in the next game. Made an impact off the bench on his debut. Second game against Port Vale. Tidy little finish in off the post after 17 minutes. Two wins courtesy of him. And while most recently we took on MK Dons, a 2-0 win in this one. Dylan Turnbull and DKM with the goals. And one of the big... I guess, I don't want to say revelations of January, but one of the big situations I've been facing here in January is the likes of Turnbull and some of our best young prospects throwing paddies, throwing hissy fits. I feel like I'm working in a, like, a, a preschool right now. It's like... I, I don't really have an analogy. Um, you can see here, Turnbull is wanted by 13 clubs. We've had so many teams bidding on him, I can't really blame them. If we just look at our email inbox, obviously deadline day has just closed. This is what I experienced on deadline day. Um, we've had so many emails with bids for him that you'll notice that the emails only actually go for as far back as yesterday at four in the afternoon. I'm not sure what the limit is for messages in Football Manager. I must have had over a hundred different emails with bids coming in for him throughout the day. It was a little bit silly to the point where I, I almost felt like it was a bug. Um, but the, the good news is he is still here. He did request a transfer. You'll notice he's got, well, two and a half years left on his current contract, plus three years after promotion. I'm hoping that if we can get promoted, he'll just stop crying. That That's the plan, and that would be good. Nick Feather, by the way, um, I don't know what to make of this guy, because apparently he has incredible potential, and I kind of have to buy into that a little bit, just because there's so many teams interested in him. But I really don't rate his current ability. He's currently transfer listed by request, which is a mistake. He shouldn't be transfer listed. I can't take him off. Um, I wonder if that's because he's in the under-23s and our staff are now kind of taking responsibility for transfer listing him. Either way, no intention of selling him, even if he is transfer listed. So sorry, Nick. Um, so he he's going to have to get over it, I'm afraid. 
And there has been one or two other players who have had similar offers. If we just go down to the under 23s, uh, interesting enough, his, his kind of morale hasn't taken a hit, but Bud, a similar kind of player, had loads of interest in him, rejected all the offers. He's not cried quite as much. So I guess two out of three crying. Darren has to be my favourite child right now. Like, that's how it works, right? I'm not a parent, so I don't know. But I feel like whichever child gives you the least amount of hassle is your favourite child on that day. That's how I feel. Anyway, a few other little bits that have happened over the month of January. Encololo has gone out on loan. He's ended up going to Blackpool. Wants to play regular first-team football. I can't give it to him here, unfortunately, with the system change especially. There's just fewer attacking midfielder spots. At 31, you know, he's been a good servant to the club, but I'd rather just have him playing regular football elsewhere. Uh, the good news is we haven't spent a massive amount of money on him, so even if we lost him on a free transfer, which I don't think we would... Um, we wouldn't be massively out of pocket. He's got over a year left on his current deal, so there's still opportunities, I guess, to move him on in the summer. Um, in other team news, Mr. Dessa has come into the first team and you know had a pretty good impact so far. Two appearances, not the best average ratings, but plenty of room for improvement. I talked about Garrido and his crucial goals. Obviously fantastic to see him have an immediate impact. Have been playing him out on the right as an inverted winger. However, we are training him to play out on the left, which I think is where he'll ultimately end up playing it's interesting, as a winger, he's just so, so well suited to the role. As an inverted winger, a little less so, but at 18 years old, he's got so many years to improve that I'm not overly concerned, I suppose. The good news about the delay in the Leicester game is that we will have a few players back from injury, because going into this game, Shuttleworth was going to be out. And in fact, he's missed the last few games, which is why Garrido started. Um, but yes, he twisted his ankle, has currently been out for 12 days. Um, so we have been missing him a fair bit, and we still got results, which I suppose is good when you're missing one of your best creative players. Of course, equally, Molyneux was not, was not going to be available for the game either. You can see his current kind of fitness situation. He's still injured, still recovering. Um, so he should hopefully be back for the Leicester game. Fingers crossed we don't have any injuries. Um, I feel like between these two players, two of our best players, I mean, look how good their average ratings are. I feel like they kind of being injured is kind of easy enough to justify why the goals have dried up a little the good news is despite the goals drying up we are I think 16 games unbeaten in the league we've kept four clean sheets in a row so defensively we're looking really really solid just to look at the league table this will probably you know change a little bit I imagine between here and next time because next episode will be at the end of the month um, but you can see we're currently very very comfortably you know clearing ahead at the top of the table doing a bit of a Charlton if I, if I dare say that, although they only lost four games all year last year, so we've got to have a very strong end to the season, but we do look good, 14 points ahead of Bradford, who do have a game in hand, in third place, Oxford United have played a game more than us, and are also 14 behind, you can see our goal difference is crazy, crazy good, considering we conceded five goals in one game, the fact that we have the second best defensive record in the league is good, and well, when it comes to goals scored, we're just blowing every other team out the water at the moment, which, of course, is really good news. So besides the youth mutiny, things are going quite well, obviously. A shame that we're not going to get to do the second game today. Um, obviously, tomorrow, Saturday morning, I'm going to try and do another double upload. Don't, uh, I was about to say, don't hold me to that, but do hold me to that. We will get a double upload going on tomorrow, and I'm hoping that I will see you guys for it. Um, just one last little bit of team news. You can see the training facilities are being upgraded. I have now had the youth facilities granted another upgrade, which will be coming next year, so... That's very, very exciting in terms of the longer-term future. And, of course, just on the stadium front, it's still happening, it's still going on, but it's still in the planning phases. It's still a few years away. If there's any movement on that, I will, of course, let you know. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. I'm sorry that our grounds people could not put on a second match, so if you were eagerly anticipating that second game, you've got to look forward to it tomorrow. Um, we have got plenty of matches to play in the meantime. I did look at other games that we could play as an alternative, but our next few games are all against teams in the bottom half of the table. It's not particularly exciting. And when you look at things, Leicester stands out, doesn't it? One month to prepare for that game, one month to get up to full fitness. We could have the league wrapped up by then. That might be slightly wishful thinking. But anyway, I hope to see you guys tomorrow for Saturday's upload. A cup run continues, even if we haven't advanced. By the way, in the next round, the winner will take on... I, I, I want to say Arsenal. I want to say Arsenal. Yes, Arsenal at home. I really want to beat Leicester now. We're the last League One team left in the competition because of the fact it's a replay that's been postponed. It's kind of balls up all the fixture scheduling, but... We'll know more come the end of the month. Don't don't worry about it. We'll play it by ear. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you guys for it. Youth intake on the way as well, so that'll be coming your way in the next couple of days. 
and I've done enough filling. I, I want to make it seem like we played the match for anyone who checks the episode, but spoilers, we haven't. It's coming tomorrow. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. If you've got anything you would like to see me cover in an episode that I've not covered recently, do let me know it down in the comments. And uh, well, other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>